Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your home for gaming, tech, news, and reviews. In today's video, we are taking a look at a full Raspberry Pi kit from a company called Labists. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, Labists reached out to me and asked if I'd take a look at their starter kit for the Raspberry Pi. I said absolutely yes, I will give it a fair and honest review. I'm a big fan of these pre-built starter packs. I think they are great for someone just getting into the Raspberry Pi, so I'm curious to see what Labists has to offer. Opening up the package, the first thing I see is the eight gigabyte version of the Raspberry Pi 4. Labists has a few different packages that contain different versions of the Raspberry Pi. They went all out here and sent me the best of the best. So this is the package with the eight gigabyte version of the Raspberry Pi. Underneath the Raspberry Pi is a quick start guide, and this is a very useful quick start guide, especially if you're new to the Raspberry Pi. There's a page here that contains GPIO pin labels so you can see where to connect the fan for both full speed and quiet settings. Opening up the box even further, and the first thing I see is a branded case. This is a plastic case. It's fairly light, but there are air vents on the top and on the bottom. So I think airflow should be pretty good with this case. This package also includes two micro HDMI cables, a fan, a screwdriver, a whopping 128 gigabyte micro SD card, a micro SD to USB-C card adapter, you don't see these very often at all, so this is kind of a neat little thing that they included here. Three heat sinks. And lastly, a Labists branded USB-C power supply. It supplies 5 volt and 3 amp of current, and it includes a power switch. Installation is fairly straightforward and fairly easy. The instruction manual will tell you where to place the heat sinks, and there are four screws that hold in the Raspberry Pi. The fan screws right onto the top of the case and then you plug it onto the GPIO pins and you're good to go. Now, the hardest part about this entire install was plugging the fan onto the GPIO pins. For some reason, the connectors did not grip those GPIO pins very well at all and they kept popping off. After a bit of effort, I did get them on and I was good to go. After installing the Raspberry Pi into the case, I noticed that all of the holes line up really nicely. This case is well designed and you don't have to worry about anything misaligning. There's a metal piece here where you can mount the case to a tripod if you want for the camera module. On the top of the case, there is a hole for that camera. All right, I have the Raspberry Pi booted up and running inside the Labist's case. And what I want to do now is run a few stress tests and see how well this case keeps the Raspberry Pi cool. Considering it does have a fan and there are three heat sinks here, I think it's going to do an okay job. Um, I'm going to run three different stress tests. I'm going to run the quiet cooling mode. I'm going to run the full speed fan cooling mode, and then I'm going to unplug the fan altogether. So right now I have the Pi overclocked at 2.147 gigahertz. It's overvolted as well. Uh, this is really going to stress the Pi out. Before I run the tests, I'm going to hold the case up to the camera so you can hear the difference between the quiet and the full cooling mode. The fan is very loud in the full cooling mode. So this is the quiet cooling mode and this is what the fan sounds like. And this is full cooling mode. So it's only been a couple of minutes using the quiet fan mode and right now I'm hitting about 78 degrees. As soon as this hits 80, I'm going to stop the test. All right, I'm running the stress test again with the fan on the maximum cooling speed, the full speed of the fan. I don't know if you can hear it right now, but it's really loud. I don't know if the microphone's picking up the fan noise at all. So the stress test is running. You can see it hovering about, I was gonna say 37, 73 degrees. Uh, 72? Is it holding steady? I hope it's holding steady at this point. I was going to shut off the test if it made it to 80. Uh, I still will, but um, if it can hold steady at 72, 73 here, I'll be very impressed. So now I've removed the overclock from the Raspberry Pi and I currently am running the test with no fans turned on. The temperature right now is sitting at about 65 degrees Celsius. I'd be surprised if this does make it through, but if it does, more power to these little heat sinks. All right, we just hit 80 degrees, actually just under 80 now. We went back down to 79. I'm going to stop the test because I don't think there's any point in continuing, but it's held up very well so far for quite a bit of time at full load using just passive cooling, just that little copper heat sink.
All right, now let's get to my likes and dislikes about this package. First and foremost, I'll go over my likes. I liked a lot. I really liked how this was packaged up. I liked the case. I liked the power supply. The power supply was actually really surprising. I thought after overclocking and running the stress test, I might run into some power delivery issues, but that was not the case. It's actually a pretty good power supply. The added benefit of having the power switch on there is a huge plus. I also like that this kit comes with two micro HDMI cables. The only thing you're really missing from this kit is a keyboard, a mouse, and a monitor. Both HDMI cables and the power supply cables were thick and they felt like they were good quality. I also like the fact that they went with a name brand micro SD card with SanDisk. There were two things I did not like about this kit and both of them have to do with the fan. The first thing I didn't like is the fact that if you have the fan tightened very tightly against the top lid here, the lid will vibrate and it will make some additional noise. What I had to do was loosen the screws just a little bit here for the fan against the lid so that the fan can kind of hang down a little bit and rest on the screws as opposed to being pushed up tight against the lid. This helped reduce the vibration and overall noise of the fan. The fan on its own isn't actually that loud, but when the fan is mounted against the lid, the whole setup becomes very loud. And the second thing I thought could use a bit of improvement was the overall fan size. Now, if you're not overclocking the Pi or not doing anything crazy with the Pi, this fan is absolutely fine. You can probably even run it just in quiet mode and barely even hear it at all. But if you are pushing the Raspberry Pi, if you're doing overclocking or anything like that, I would say this is probably not the best application that you'd be looking for. This fan, even when overclocked and I had it running at full speed, the fan wasn't really big enough and didn't push enough air to effectively cool the chips. You saw the temperatures I was running in the high 70s and I don't really think that this fan is suitable for that application. But in all fairness, this is a starter kit and if you're not overclocking the Pi, this fan will serve you absolutely fine, even under load, even in quiet mode under load. You should be absolutely fine. And I don't know many people who would be picking up a starter kit with intentions of immediately overclocking the Raspberry Pi. I would actually highly advise against it if this is your first Raspberry Pi. I don't want to say overclocking is an advanced thing to do on the Raspberry Pi because it's very simple and straightforward but the understanding of overclocking and temperatures and how everything kind of responds, including voltages, um, is a little bit more, I would say, above a beginner level thing to do. So that being said, I think this is an okay application for beginners. Now the kit that I tested out today is listed on Amazon in Canada for $240. If you're in the States, it's listed at $150. Now this kit includes the eight gigabyte version of the Raspberry Pi, as well as a 128 gigabyte micro SD card. Overall, I think this is not a bad value at all, considering the eight gigabyte version of the Raspberry Pi isn't really cheap. Now, if $240 or $150 is a little above your price point, you don't necessarily need an eight gigabyte Raspberry Pi. They also offer the four gigabyte Raspberry Pi kit, with a slightly smaller micro SD card sitting at 64 gigs for $143 Canadian or $115 American. And for all of my friends overseas, this will set you back 104 pounds. Overall, I highly recommend both the eight gigabyte and four gigabyte kits from Labists. The quality of the parts is there. They're actually a little above some of the other kits I've seen, which is pretty darn good. They give you pretty much absolutely everything you need here. And if you're a more advanced Raspberry Pi user, you can just swap out parts if you want to later on. It's not necessarily a big deal. Uh, for the price, it's probably also cheaper to get everything here as a kit as opposed to try to source everything individually. So thank you Labus for providing me this kit to take a look at and thank you for investing in quality components for your kits. This is a pretty darn good kit for the money. That is all I've got for today, so let me know what you think about this kit in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.